In this video I'm going to explain how sequence notation works and different ways that we can describe sequences. So by the time you've got to this stage of maths you'll, you'll have come across lots of sequences in the past. This one 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 and the dot 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 meaning that's just going to continue forever in, in that pattern. Here I suppose it's just going up to uh, every number and that sequence will continue. Um, and we can describe the sequence in a couple of ways but we need to first introduce some notation. So I'm going to call this whole sequence x, we could use any number, but I'm going to say that when I write x1 like that, so it's x with a little 1 next to it, that means the first term of this sequence x. In fact I might even write sequence xn um, and we'll see that notation coming up a bit more in a second. And then similarly uh, we've got this would be x2, this would be x3, this would be x4, uh, this would be x5, so x2 would be exactly the same as above, but x2 is the second term in the sequence, similarly x3 is the third term. So that's just a notation that we use to describe this whole sequence, and then I can think of that whole sequence then as a sequence xn, and the reason we write that is, well, n is a number that starts at 1, goes up 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So if I take all the different possible values of n from you know, n equals uh, 1, 2, 3, etc., then that determine, determines this whole sequence. So for this sequence I could, I could write things like x1 is 3, x2 is 5, I could say x3 plus x4, well that would be 7 plus 9, that's 16, and we can just use this as a useful notation to describe the sequence. And now there are two ways um, of describing uh, this sequence, and the first one we'll talk about is the oh, we've got the nth term definition. So uh, sometimes this might be also called an ordinal description uh, of the sequence. And the nth term definition for this sequence is xn equals 2n plus 1. And so this, if you like, is a formula for getting all of the different values of this sequence uh, out from here. So I can say, well, x1, that's, I've replaced n with 1, so I'll replace n with 1 on the other side. I get 2 times 1 plus 1, and that's 3. x2, that would be 2 times 2 plus 1, replacing n with 2, and that gives us 5. x3 would be 2 times 3 plus 1. Uh, and that's 7. And we can see this is generating that sequence. And if I keep going, this will generate all of the different terms in that sequence. Um, and this is much better than just writing down the sequence, because this really does uh, tell us it's a sequence that's going up in twos, and it starts at 3. This one really, although it looks like it's going to be a sequence going up in twos, it might be uh, in, uh, the, the next number is something other than 13. You know, it could, the next one could be 100 or, or a million. Um, I could make up a much more complicated formula that would make a sequence like that. So, so we don't really know for sure, you know, what the sequence is unless we, uh, you know, it's not totally determined mathematically rigorously unless we've got a definition that's more like this. And now an alternative way that we could define the sequence is by what we call a term-to-term -term definition, or sometimes called an iterative definition. And for this sequence, that would be x1 equals 3, we're just stating that the first term is 3, and now I'm going to give you a rule that tells you how to get from one term to the next. So it's going to say xn plus 1 equals xn plus 2. What this is saying is, okay, if you want xn plus 1, you take xn and you add on 2. So again, this is a formula that works for all different values of n. So if I, uh, in this definition, replaced uh, n with 1, that would be x1 plus 1, that's x2, equals x1 plus 2. And because we've got this first term included in the definition that x1 is 3, I can say, okay, well, x1 is 3, so that's 3 plus 2, that's 5. I could use the definition again, this time I'll put n equals 2 in here, so x2 plus 1, that's x3, is x2 plus 2, and we've, we know that x2 is 5, so uh, x3 is 7. We can keep going on and on, getting all the terms in the sequence like that. So this defines the sequence as well. And notice we really do need both 
this part and this part of the definition. This part of the rule obviously is kind of the main bit of how the sequence is working. It tells us what type of sequence it is, that it's going up in twos. But unless I you also tell me where to start, I don't know. For example, I could have a different sequence. Let's call it y, which is uh, given by y1 equals 4 and has y n plus 1 is y n plus 2 so it's got the same rule it's got the same rule for the sequence it's just going up in twos but it starts at 4 so this sequence is going to be y1 is 4 y2 is 6 uh, y3 is going to be 8 and I get a different sequence so we do need both parts of those definitions for the iterative, iterative definitions as we'll see some sequences are much easier to define this way some the other way and for some it doesn't matter so much but it's really important to be able to go between them so we'll now just look at a few examples of uh, sequences defined in different ways so here's another sequence it goes 11 7 3 minus 1 minus 5 and let's call it uh, xn again so this is x1 x2 x3 x4 uh, and x5 etc um, and what we can see in this sequence is it's going down in fours and it starts at 11 so the term to term definition of the sequence is fairly straightforward to write down remember in the term to term definition I just need to say what the first term is so that's x1 equals 11 it tells us that we start at 11 and to go from one term to the next I subtract 4 so xn plus 1 equals xn minus 4 I take the previous term and subtract 4 and that will generate this uh, whole sequence when I put n equals 1 in here I'll get x2 is x1 minus 4 and because I know that x1 is 11 that will be 7 and then we'll keep going like that, it will keep subtracting 4 so that's the term to term definition and the other way we can define it is the nth term definition you've probably done these sorts of nth term things before maybe not using this notation um, and you probably know that this is a linear sequence just going down in fours then that would mean that the nth term would have minus 4n in it because every time I add 1 to n in this I am going to take off another 4 and we just need then to make sure that this matches up with the first term so when I put n equals 1 in here at the moment I get minus 4 times 1 which is minus 4 but I actually want 11 so I'll need to plus 4 to get to 0 and plus another 11 to get to 11 so we'll get plus 15 here, or you might prefer to write that as uh, 15 minus 4n if you want exactly the same exactly the same thing. And when I plug in, say, n equals 4 here, I would get x4 equals 15 minus 16, and that's minus 1. Um, so the more practice you get, the quicker you'll be able to come up with these different sorts of definitions. Um, term, the, you know, these are good in different situations. Um, if I now said I want to find the thousandth term of this sequence, if I want to say what's x1000, then you can probably see that this nth term one is the best definition to use and it's quite handy because I can now just say let's plug in n equals 1000 into this formula, say 15 minus 4 times 1000, and so I'll get um, minus 3000 985 and that's the thousandth term of the sequence. Here's another sequence 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 and let's call this one yn and what we can see is that this one is a doubling sequence, it's just doubling every time. So if I wanted a, an iterative uh, definition or a term to term definition, as always I need to specify the first term so x1 is 2 and once I've got that first one to go from one term to the next I just double so xn plus 1 is 2 times xn, that's what doubling is, just timesing by 2, so I take uh, to get x2, put n equals 1 in here, and I say x2 is 2 times x1, x3 is 2 times x2, etc. And this you know, here specifies that for all the different values, and once I've got the, now if I've got the first term as well, I've got 2 times 2, that's 4, and then x2 is 4, so 2 times Four is 8 and that specifies that whole sequence so there's my term to term definition and if I wanted the nth term definition then this one would just be xn and for this sort of sequence it's really 2 to the power of something and here it's quite nice it's just 2 to the power of n when I have uh, 2 to the if I put n equals 1 for the first term here because this one is 
x1 I get 2 to the 1 is 2 x2 I get 2 to the 2 is 4 x3 2 to the 3 is 8 and that will work for the nth term definition here's another sequence um, let's call this one a n and uh, this is just the square numbers as you can see 1 4 9 16 25 so it's really easy to write down the nth term definition because that's just a n equals n squared and this is often the case it's much easier to write down this definition than it is to find a term to term definition here um, and there are um, ways of doing it but it's much it's, it's much harder so for example this does it term to term definition a n plus 1 is the square root of a n then add 1 and then square and you can see this works but it doesn't feel like a very nice way of expressing this but for, but it will work sorry I'll also need to of course have uh, a1 equals 1 um, but then to get to a2 we put n, 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 n equals 1 in here it, it would say that uh, a2 equals the square root of a1 which is 1 plus 1 squared so that would then give me 2 squared which is 4 as we want and if I were to put in a3 instead here I would get the square root of a2 and that's uh, now the square root of 4, so it takes me back to 2 again, then it adds 1 to say 3, so it's 3, and then it's 3 squared, which is 9. Um, so this isn't a particularly nice definition, because all it's doing is it's when it, it takes this square, it does this square root, it takes us back to the term number, adds 1, and then squares. But it does work. I bet the nth term one is much nicer here. Sometimes people will suggest this is the term-to-term -term definition here, to say that a n plus 1 is a n plus 2 n plus 1. So for example, uh, and again with uh, a1 equals 1, so for example if I put n equals 1 in here it's a2 equals a1 plus 2 plus 1 which is 1 plus 2 plus 1 which is 4 and you can check that that does um, that, does, that, that does work here um, now um, and you can sort of see why this works as well because if we know the nth term definition is n squared that would be n squared plus 2n plus 1 and n plus 1 squared we know is n squared plus 2n plus 1 just multiplying out the brackets so this will give you the right answer for each term but this isn't really either a term to term definition or an nth term definition because in the term to term definition here we also need to use which term we're at so it doesn't really tell us how to go from one term to the next in the same way uh, each time it depends on the term number so it's not a purely term to term definition so one last sequence, um, slightly different one, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and we'll call this capital Fn. And the reason for choosing capital Fn here is this, this is a, a famous sequence of numbers which you might have heard of, which is the Fibonacci uh, sequence. Very important, lots of good applications. And you can see how you make this is you take the two terms before and you add them together. So 1 plus 1 gives you 2, 1 plus 2 gives you 3, 2 plus 3 gives you 5, 3 plus 5 gives you 8, 5 plus 8 gives you 13, etc. Okay, so um, this is quite hard to write down in either the nth term or term to term ones, but the term to term definition is the much easier one to do. And the term to term definition, though, uh, doesn't just rely on the previous term because what we're saying is okay, if I need to go from one term, I can't just go from one term to the next, I need to go from the previous two terms to the next one. So what it says is that fn plus 2 is fn plus fn plus 1 and we also now need to specify that f1 equals 1 and f2 equals 1 I actually and this is the whole definition of the sequence I need two starting points because if you just give me one number to start off with well when I try and make it the next one I've got to add the previous two together I, I, I can't do it um, but here if I take this one here, let's say if I put n, n equals 1 in here, it tells me that f3 equals f1 plus f2, and I've got those, so that's 1 plus 1, so that's 2. If I want to work out uh, f4, that would be f2 plus f3, and I've now got f2 and f3, so that's 1 plus 2, so that's 3. And I can keep generating instances uh, of that of that formula to get each of the next ones here. The nth term definition for this one is very difficult and not one you'd 
come up with um, unless you already knew it. But here it is, it's fn equals 1 divided by root 5, 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the n. No reason you'd um, be able to come up with that, of course, but I just want to show you how sometimes an nth term definition is much more complicated than an uh, term to term 1 and, and vice versa. So you know, it's good to have both of these ways of describing uh, sequences here. Um, there we go.